My name is Patrick Stratton. I make mechanical tapestries. I'm based in London in the UK. So I'm originally from Bromley. I studied maths and philosophy at University of Leeds. Then I went on to do a master's in fine art at City and Guilds London School of Art. My practice is heavily focused on the day-to-day -day and it is based around kind of exploring just these things which we do sometimes constantly through the day and how complicated they are and how necessary they are whether or not they're in society or just for your health you, get, you know you kind of have to brush your teeth <laughs> there's also an aspect of kind of existentialist thinking giving value to things which are quite mundane and boring and analysing them in a sort of scientific like manner. The mediums I use is mainly electronics and tapestry. I started tapestry weaving about four or five years ago. I'm not really sure why I started. My mum did it and she still does it and I used to watch her do it when I was very small so it was ingrained into me quite early I suppose. And I also grew up playing around with Lego and <laughs> tinkering with things I really shouldn't have and breaking a lot of PCs in the process. That's a bit of a cornerstone in my practice, like the exploration of what tapestry can do and weaving can do. And that eventually led to just shoving a bunch of motors and electronics in it and just seeing what happens. My name is Cassie Arnold and I am a conceptual artist that uses fibers as my primary medium. I currently live in Denton, Texas with my husband and three young daughters. I am inspired by exploring unspoken and taboo topics that are connected to my life as a woman. While my fiber works are wearable, their encoded meaning is identifiable without their activation through performance. My hope is that my work will encourage all people, not just women, to engage in an open dialogue about topics like miscarriage, breastfeeding, parenting, and the transformative female form. I love pushing the boundaries of traditional craft within my work. By using techniques such as hand knitting, I hope to change the cultural narrative of women's work and ultimately push back against stereotypes surrounding females, their bodies, their capabilities, and their lives. Alternatively, I feel like textiles are nostalgic and familiar, making the article itself less abrasive and more inviting to start a conversation over. Being shortlisted for the art prize has been such an honor. I was so blown away by the artists who applied this year, and honestly, I still feel a bit in shock that my work was chosen as top 30. My name is Maggie Scott, and I'm a textile artist. I work primarily with fibres and I make felt. An activist is someone who cannot help but fight for something. That person is usually not motivated by a need for power or money or fame, but in fact driven slightly mad by some injustice or some cruelty or some unfairness. And that's exactly what inspires me, if you like. I'm driven slightly mad by some particular subject, some cruelty, some unfairness. And that motivates me, that inspires me, that gives me the subject of what I want to work on. My practice has several elements to it, really. You know, making felt the kind of felt that I do, which is called Nuno felting. It's where I create an image which is printed onto silk, usually onto silk chiffon. And silk allows me to place fibres and encourage them to enter into the silk. So if you like, I paint with fibres, but I paint based on an image that I've already created, which is printed on the silk. My name is Annalise Angus. I'm a tapestry artist and I'm based in Godalming in the UK. 
I started making needlepoint tapestries when I was a teenager and I was bored by all the packs and things that they made. So I started making my own and at the time I was working in um, nightclubs and I was a nanny and doing different sorts of jobs and that influenced the work that I did and started to create stuff that was more to do with uh, popular culture and um, things around me. Through my work I'm exploring how you can capture a moment in time, an essence of a place through one still image. I choose to use hand-woven tapestries because of the many qualities that it can give you. One of the main reasons being the historical value. I also love the experimentation that you can do with it through the images, the materials you use, how you can make it sculptural and how you can take this traditional medium and deconstruct it. And in a way, it's a bit like vandalism in itself. Those individuals that spray paint a word on a wall and an act of defiance, it's the same feeling for me when I pull apart a tapestry or bring something into it that's not normally there. I feel like I'm, I'm pushing against something that's very traditional and set in stone. And in the same way, I love the idea that I'm taking a fast, uh, rebellious, impermanent mark that someone's made on a wall and transferring it into using a time-consuming technique such as tufting that's going to be there forever. <laughs> Voilà, nous sommes basés à Kinshasa, en République démocratique du Congo. We are both formed as painters, but we also use performance, we use digital art today. That makes us a lot flexible, which is necessary because we are moving in very different spaces between two continents. There are not a lot of galleries in Congo, so therefore it's very nice here to do stuff in the public space as performance and street art, whether in Germany, Right now, digital art is very important. Voilà, cette année, nous avons développé aussi des vidéos, collages dans des vidéos avec peinture et dessin. Et nous avons aussi développé le, le monde virtuel, c'est-à-dire travailler avec la réalité virtuelle et réelle. Our artistic practice is a lot inspired by traveling between Europe and Africa and all that comes with this kind of travel. That means like the confrontational situation in changing social systems. That means also that personal perceptions and individual comfort zones are questioned and challenged all the time. So this is what inspires us a lot. That leads us also to a kind of post-colonial perspective. As a duo from two different continents, people always tend to interpret our work based on our nationality. Therefore, we develop this kind of specific collaboration where we work as a duo together on the same support. Nos peintures sont cotinées ou notre travail en général est cotiné. C'est parce que nous évitons des problématiques et problèmes d'origine géographique dans, dans le travail artistique. This way we can avoid be represented because of our nationality. Mm -hmm.